There are few places in the world with a fishing history as rich as New Brunswick's. If I was going to gain a better insight to North America's fishing traditions, it was important that I make my way east to explore the famed Miramichi River. It was in the mid-1800s when farmers and loyalists from Scotland made their way overseas to the Maritimes. Needless to say, they were amazed by what they found. The Scots were no fools when it came to recognizing the opportunity New Brunswick had to offer. And soon, wealthy men from the UK were making month-long boat rides just to experience the salmon fishing they'd heard tales of. Resident angler Serge Collen and my British Columbian co-worker Catherine Laflamme joined us as we met up with longtime guide Gary Colford and attempted to catch the king of all salmon, the Atlantic. Very nice to meet you. Originally fished by royalty in England and Scotland, Atlantic salmon have been celebrated for hundreds of years around the world. So how many days a week are you guiding, Gary? Once we start, I do seven days a week. Well, usually we start at 15th of April and we do spring fishing. And when that's done, with the middle of May, we're done. And then we're off for about three weeks. Then we come back and we do it till the 15th of October. Wow, okay, that's seven days a week's a long time. See how the water's consistent but slow? Mm -hmm. Would they be out over there? What they're going to do if they're following, they're going to go, you see where that first ripple in that shore? Yeah. Right in hand either? About 20 feet outside there's a lie. You can see it when you get up there. It's like a dip in the water. I, actually, I think yeah, you might yeah, see it. Yeah. And they'll come and rest there. Yeah. And up above there's another ripple above that. And that yes. lies and they'll, they'll rest there. Right. I'd heard stories of anglers fishing for years and never actually hooking into a salmon. I was aware that such a pursuit was a very real gamble, but I was determined. If I was going out of this empty-handed, I was making damn sure that I had clawed my way through defeat. What is it about the Miramichi and the Canes that would keep you doing this for almost 50 years? It's got a lot to do with people. Like, uh, you make friendships. I've got the same people for 30 some years now, and they come back every year. So we, we almost grew up together. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's what it's got a lot to do with it. And like, everybody's different. And no, no two people are the same. So you never get bored, you're always finding something new. With this part of the project, we're uh, in the Miramichi area, so the Miramichi watershed. Uh, today we're actually fishing on the Norwest. salmon for you know many years ago it was it, it wasn't necessarily it was a resource in the river it was a fish for for families and the river was used for forestry operations where they would you know bring in the, the woods from the river to the mill down here in Miramichi city so uh, it's just that when when the fishing uh, or the sport fishing of Atlantic salmon got popular I mean this this area here has hosted uh, royalties and celebrities from Bobby Orr to Marilyn Monroe to uh, and, and the famous Ted Williams. I think that Ted Williams really uh, was the greatest ambassador for the Miramichi River in, in his time. History has shown countless theories and opinions on the impact rain has on a river. This will be interesting, because remember I was telling you about that Waddington theory about when it starts to rain, it takes a certain amount of oxygen out of the river? Yeah. 
Now this is the first third of the river, and he does say that it's the upper two thirds that it affects. So I don't know if it'll make a difference, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so I guess are we gonna start at the same spot where we? Yeah, we're gonna go up the top of the pool, dry that first. And... I'm gonna just dump this bag here. It can get soaking wet. It doesn't matter. Ooh, it feels fishy out here. It dropped quite a bit. So it's down pretty good. It did drop. Pretty good. It looks really good. Some say fish won't bite on a rising flow, and that the best fishing happens when the water is dropping. I know that for me, a dropping river usually means a good day. But the rain was looking like it wasn't about to let up. A Richard Waddington book I'd read voiced the theory that as the rain drops, speed and sun penetration takes the oxygen out of the drops, therefore lowering the oxygen in the river and stirring the fish to bite. So I guess we'll give it, we've got one more evening fish. Yes. And we've got a morning fish tomorrow. Yep. And this rain's certainly gonna push some fish in. It, it stirs the water, it stirs the water, makes it different. It colors the water a bit and everything helps. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it was interesting to put my hand in the water and feel the temperature change. Well, every time it rains, like you'll feel a little bit the top of the water is almost like a milk warm, we call it milk warm, but down below eight inches or so, the water's cool. Okay, so it's like a thermocline or something. We'll just try it as hard as we can try. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll get a look at the canes. That would be great. The Canes River is a tributary to the Miramichi. Its fantastic trout fishing can ease the pain of slow salmon fishing, and I think that Gary was hopeful to see a fish of any species. Indigenous brook trout graced the banks of the Canes River. Some of them were ocean goers, so the chance of getting into a large one helped to lighten the mood of our gloomy day. The start of a new day works wonders on an angler's confidence. Warm weather and sparkling water called me to her. Gary was waiting in anticipation for a fresh start, and I just hoped to be able to feel some sort of connection to a fish, any fish. Oh. It's gonna happen again. Oh, there oh. it is, there it is. Cat, if this, if it's a salmon, I want the net. If it jumps, I want the net. Gary. I think it's a grill, Scary. It's acting like a bass. A bass? That's what it's acting like. Are there bass in the server? Yeah. That's what it's acting like. That's interesting. I think it's a little bass. Is that a grill would be in the air? Sure, it's pulling really, really, really well. What is it? It's not a bass. No. fish is fighting extremely well for its size. You ready, Gary? Yeah, I'm gonna use you to back in about five feet. And that's wishful thinking. We'll try one more. Night. Get it a grill, sir, trout. Nice grill. Oh, Gary, nice Perfect work. Girl. Thank you. You know what? I said a little prayer for fun. <laughs> A grills is an Atlantic salmon who has only spent one year in the salt water before returning to the river. Little hook, I think. Oh, she's just gorgeous. <gasps> wow, I don't, I don't she take is... them out of the water. Nope, let's leave her right yeah. there. Oh, thank you, you beautiful, beautiful little fish. She is so gorgeous. That's the one we seen rolling. That's what we saw roll. Wow, we did it, Gary. No, I knew we could. They're beautiful fish, regardless of their size. And neither Gary nor I could wipe the smiles from our faces. I was guiding a guy from Maine. Or we went out and we got a 30-pounder, and I netted it. Rodney got a 35-pounder, I netted it. Then Rodney swings around and get a 40-pounder, and I netted it. So we netted almost over 100 pounds of fish within two hours. Now you know what happens, right? That story gets passed down to Rodney's son and then gets passed down to his son. You're going to be legendary. <laughs> you know that, right? Your great-grandson, you're going to be legendary. No, it, it's like 
if you could remember everything, it would be a lot of fish over the years. Yeah. For instance, my net, it's, I, got, I bought the net in 1990, and it's the same net, same mash, and I don't know how many fish is in it, like over the years. Got some history. Yeah, so. You know, this is a special thing, so if we could pass, let's say for example, that you got long after you're gone, and your great-grandchildren are watching this. Yeah. Is there anything that you would want to say to them? I just want them to remember me as being good to them. That's the most important part. Like, uh, if they can remember me for being with them. That's <laughs> all. Nothing else. You're going to make me cry again. Did you do this to me <laughs> earlier on the river? <laughs> uh, how does your, like, uh, it's your family. Are you, you are, you're making me <laughs> cry, aren't you? No, it is, and it's the most important thing in the world, and I wish to God that, that I had you a wait, grandpa to look back at and do you that wait way. wait till you get your own children, your grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> then you'll remember me. <laughs> so. Well, I don't have a grandpa who fishes, so you're basically, especially if I move out this way, you can be my new grandpa. Sure, why not? Now, get back to fishing, because you guys are making me look like a big softie. Now, let's do it. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. There are moments spent while fishing that can't help but leave an impression. Some of these moments are the fish themselves, but for me, most of them are the people and stories that I stumble upon along the way.